Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to one for the driving nerds. These are my favorite videos to make because I get to do what I enjoy most, which is driving and explaining how cars drive in different environments, especially with electric vehicles. You see, I've read so many articles recently from different automotive journalists that are like, all EVs drive the same and you can't have character or difference of feel. And I'm just like, that couldn't be farther from the truth. So that's why I do this series, which is a city, canyon, and highway driving dynamics review of some of the cars. Now, these are typically really long videos that'll be broken up into a few different chapters. But if you're interested in buying a Genesis GV60 Performance, I bet no one will go as in-depth as we're about to go. Quick note, this is the Genesis GV60 Performance, which means it's got the big boy motors and everything, but it's not as spicy as the EV6 GT, or I believe the Ionic 5N. We'll talk a little bit more about where this fits into the overall structure. We're gonna drive it around the city gently, seeing how it feels on like a daily commute. Then we're gonna get it up in the canyons, shred it, try boost mode, drift mode, all the good stuff. Then we're gonna cruise down the highway a little bit, take a listen to the noise, see how the driver assistance system works, but we'll have a whole other video on the driver assistance system. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a long one, so strap in. We got a lot to talk about. This is the 2023 Genesis GV60 Performance, and I think it's kind of crazy. My mom drives this car actually, and why she got the performance one, because there's three different trims. There's a rear wheel drive, there's an all wheel drive, and then there's this top spec, which is pretty much almost $70,000. She got the fast one because it came with the nice seats, which is really funny. So it has this quilted Napa leather seats, and we'll talk about that a little bit in the video. To walk you through some of the specs on this car, because I think it's important to understand how it works, um, We'll, we'll start with the rear axle. You can option the GV60 as just a rear wheel drive car. It's a 168 kilowatt motor in the back. And um, you know, that's more than ID4 rear wheel drive. I'm sure it's fine and, and no issues there. I'm glad that the single motor option is on the correct axle on the back. EGMP, electric global modular platform that this car is built on underpins EV6, Ionic 5, and this car. I think more to come. And it's, you know, can be stretched and shaped kind of however you want, but the architecture is feature proofed. I mean, really just one of the most advanced underpinnings ever. And that goes for driving dynamics as well. Just the whole construction, the way that they use a McPherson strut in the front, a five link in the rear, it's very premium. Uh, and it's right up there with some of the best competition. The rear axle being the primary axle, because the way that platforms are developed is that it's not front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. You have a primary and secondary axle when we start talking engineering language. Choosing the rear axle as a primary axle for an electric vehicle makes all the sense in the world. It helps with traction under acceleration and the argument as to rear wheel drive being worse in the snow than front wheel drive doesn't hold up as well with electric vehicles because typically that argument makes sense when you have the big heavy combustion engine over the front wheels. Here you have the electric motor, which can pretty much fit in a suitcase. This weighs almost nothing. The weight balance is great. Having it in the rear allows the rear wheels to push the car and the front wheels to turn the car. And I believe if you're a good driver, it's actually easier to drive with oversteer than understeer. Okay, so that's the rear axle, 168 kilowatt rear motor. If you go all wheel drive, you also have the rear axle being the primary axle, but it's down from 168 kilowatts to 160. Pretty sure it's just the same unit detuned eight kilowatts. I don't know why they need to make this distinction, but they did. Maybe it's different, but 160 kilowatt in the rear and then a 74 kilowatt electric motor up front. And that's the same as Ionic 5 all wheel drive, EV6 all wheel drive that we've driven a ton, plenty of power. I really don't think you need any more power than that. And what's interesting is they're both permanent magnet motors. Permanent magnet motors are great for off the line acceleration and efficiency given certain driving conditions. The problem is when you have two electric motors, uh, you really don't want them engaged all the time. And so, for example, if we look at ID4 or you know, Skoda Enyaq, if we compare this to MEB platform, they use a permanent magnet rear motor and then a um, asynchronous motor up front, so an induction motor up front. 
And the thing with an induction motor is you can pretty much shut off all the power to it and there's no drag or very little drag. In the case of a permanent magnet motor, there's always flux related losses. So even cruising down the highway, you'll have a one, two, three kilowatt drag in some cases, which is not good for efficiency. So what uh, the engineers did on EGMP, which is really smart and becoming more popular, is actually install a clutch disconnect uh, that basically physically disconnects the front motor from the drive line. Or, uh, and, and the cool thing is that means the motor is spinning pretty much at zero, just totally disconnected from the wheels. And then there's not as much losses. Of course, you still have to carry the weight of that motor around. And weirdly in the EPA cycle with these cars, they get like 40 or 50 miles less range with all wheel drive. And I can't quite figure out why, because typically in the EPA cycle, you run key upsetting, which is standard mode. And we'll talk more about this logic when we drive the car and the front motor is disconnected when this happens. So uh, under light throttle and pretty much their drive cycles aren't, aren't big wide open accelerations. So I really, really want to do the test where we run a rear wheel drive big battery against an all wheel drive big battery, either Ionic 5, EV6 or this car, doesn't matter to me. I wanna see if the difference is really there in the real world or it just shows up in the EPA test cycles that they run the cars through. Okay, so that's the all wheel drive cycle is 160 kilowatt in the rear and then 74 kilowatt up front. This being the GV60 performance is the same 160 kilowatt motor in the rear, but also a 160 kilowatt motor up front. And interestingly, they use the same gear ratios. Typically, I suggest not using the same gear ratios, especially if you have a staggered setup, which this car doesn't, it's on a square stance and we'll get into that in a little bit as well. Um, and and the, in the regular all wheel drive, the one with the 74 kilowatt front motor has a different gear ratio. So it has one basically for hard acceleration, one for cruising on the highway, also helps with harmonics cruising down the highway. This has identical gear ratios, I think the same motor front and rear, I don't know why they would have to design a different one, still retains the clutch disconnect on the front axle and yeah, rips. So we'll get into that a little bit. So we have a total of 320 kilowatts of power. It's like 420 horsepower. However, all electric motors have a peak and nominal rating. And typically, uh, like if we look at a Mustang Mach-E GT Performance, for example, when you go wide open acceleration, they give you everything you have. I wanna say it's almost 500 horsepower, high 400s at least. Um, that gives you five seconds of peak and then it has to start backing off power. And we've driven Mach-E in many scenarios where we actually get it into turtle mode, also due to a battery pack issue, not just on the motors, but basically the car decides when to use the peak or when to use the nominal rating. Here, in the GV60 performance, there's a boost button on the steering wheel that gives basically these motors the chance of 10 seconds to go from 160 kilowatts to 180 kilowatts each. That is my understanding that it bumps both motors 20 kilowatt peak performance. So now we're talking about 360 kilowatts of power, which is you know closer to that high 400 range and man, does it rip. It's very impressive. Um, what I would have liked to see actually was that boost button just juice the rear axle. And I'll explain why when we drive the car. And I'm not totally sure what's happening with this, but that's at least based off of all the information, everyone I've asked, that's what I hear is happening. So we have a peak rating of 360 kilowatts, a nominal rating of 320 kilowatts of power. I bet that you, even at you know the nominal rating when you're going wide open throttle, we'll take it up in the canyons and see, I bet we can still overheat some stuff and back it off, but still nice that they let you access the peak through a selection. I'm not sure it's the right strategy, but there we go. Okay, so that's the drive line. Battery pack is a 77.4 kilowatt hour, pretty much usable battery pack. I don't know, they don't actually state gross and usable capacity, which is kind of annoying. We've pretty much pulled every drop of 77.4 kilowatt hours out of this thing. So they let you use most of it. I've just run the car in the 70 mile per hour highway range test, which got 235 miles, which is surprising because that's its EPA combined cycle rating, which means city and highway in, in all of the loops. And that's really impressive considering it's on the 21 inch wheels. It's 10 miles more than we ran in an Ionic 5 with two inch smaller diameter wheels both on all wheel drive. So that's very impressive to me. I think the shape of this is a little bit more aero than Ionic 5. It must be, you wouldn't think looking up front cause this is pretty tall and blunt, but 
hey, I think they did a pretty good job with this. Um, okay, uh, charging speed, you know, we, we'll, it's all the same as Ionic 5 EV6. It's 240 kilowatts peak delivered when you have a little bit of accessory load on the car. Uh, charges, they claim, 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. We've verified that many times. This has battery preconditioning. Now, I don't think for cooling, just for warming, which is really what's relevant anyway for most people. Uh, and it really only get, works in the winter time because I had the battery at about 20, 22 degrees Celsius. And even then I couldn't get it up to uh, see any preconditioning logic at all. But I'm glad it has it. it. And you have to navigate to the charging station in the screen. No plug and charge here, which is kind of a bummer. But again, this is a, the driving dynamics review. So let's talk suspension, wheels and tires and everything. Interestingly, um, 255 40 R21s on Michelin all season tires, and they are the Primacy Tour AS. So not the stickiest tire. I actually would have liked to see them go with a Michelin Pilot Sport 4 or even a 4S tire on this car. You put performance on the name, give it a good tire. I don't think this is enough tire for the vehicle. However, we do know that Hyundai Kia Genesis are like crazy when it comes to suspension and tire. So it's an OE spec tire. It's designed for the car with its own unique compound. And we'll play around with that and see how it does. Not a staggered setup. I've heard some reports of people saying this car is pretty loose on the rear axle. And I think a lot of that comes down to, again, the same 255 section tire in the rear. And um, yeah, 540 tread wear is just, that's not a sticky enough tire for this car. I think you really gotta, gotta bump up the tire is my impression, but it makes it fun to slide around a little bit. Um, and so that is pretty interesting. We'll see how that plays around. I th I think I'm a, I'm a much bigger fan of a square setup for my type of driving, but I do worry about the car being almost a bit too oversteery for the general user. We'll see how it goes. Suspension, uh, again, McPherson strut up front, five link in the rear, but active damper, which is nice. So the, it's a fixed spring rate, can't change that. That's just the metal component. However, uh, active damper, which does seem to have pretty good adjustability, also has a pretty neat function where it scans the road ahead and then adjust damper configuration before you hit a bump or a pothole. Don't know how well that works, but I did have it on some really bumpy roads last night doing a range test in certain sections and switching from comfort to sport. You could really feel the thing flex out uh, in comfort mode. It was really nice it, and it doesn't get too, too stiff. Uh, on the rear axle, we have some interesting work going on here as well with the performance trim. We have an electronic limited slip differential. This is hugely important for controlling uh, sort of uh, lateral wheel spin. Again, longitudinal drivetrain control is done by software. There's no drive shaft linking front and rear motor. But to have an ELSD in the rear means we can try and get wheel spin closer together in a variable ratio. I don't know if it goes to a full lock. I don't know if it'll go 100% lock, but this will really save the brakes some heat because there's two ways to control wheel spin on a drive axle. The first is using an electronic simulated limited slip diff where let's say we're, we're turning hard right, we floor it, the inside wheel is spinning, we grab that brake caliper, creates extra force and then sends the drive power to the outside wheel. This does that still. But then there's also a limited slip diff that mechanically tries to pull the power closer to an even distribution between the two. And that to me is key. That shows, okay, these guys are not messing around. In terms of braking, we have the same size front and rear brake rotors. The caliper is different. We have a four piston caliper up front monoblock, single piston in the rear, both upped from the all wheel drive. So when you jump up to the performance trim, you do get a lot of mechanical changes. You get a limited slip diff in the rear, you get the active damper, you get huge, for this car, I would say pretty big brakes, 14.1 inch, I think, which is sizable considering this still does 200 and something kilowatt regen. And it's like, okay, they're not messing around. I'm really excited after experiencing this to drive the EV6 GT and Ionic 5N because that's just gonna be this cranked up even farther. This to me is sort of like the luxurious GT version, but you can also shred it up a back road. I hope, we'll see, I haven't driven it hard yet, genuinely. So we're all, good, we're all gonna be experiencing this together. Uh, I think that's enough nerd talk about the setup of the car for now. We're gonna jump inside, drive it around the city a little bit, then take it up into the canyons, 
which I'm really looking forward to. I have no idea what to expect, but the whole um, boost mode, drift mode, maybe I should mention drift mode in a little bit, and then we'll take it on the highway. Okay, drift mode. The way this works is you have to go ESP off. I'll show you all of this. You go sport mode, ESP off, pull both paddles, and then it goes into drift mode. This basically changes the whole simulated vehicle dynamics control to help get the car into a corner using very aggressive braking strategy, dialing that LSD all the way up in the rear, and then it should technically on power oversteer very easily. That's what it should do. That's the idea. I don't know if it's using individual brake controls to actually help the car rotate in a corner like Tesla's track mode. Rimac does this as well. And we drove a Magna I-Pace uh, test development vehicle. And we have a whole video on that strategy as to how to control yaw with a braking system, uh, you know, off throttle. But again, too much nerd talk. Let's go drive this thing. And welcome to the inside of the Genesis GV60. Hey, Alyssa. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for filming that intro. Of course. You have to, we gotta open up this roof. Oh, it opens up. Separately. From the center. Yeah. yeah, same as Ionic 5. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna put the massage seat on. How do I do that? You're not able. Oh. Yep, they cheaped out. Only mm. on the driver's side. <sighs> Knock one down. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, here's the deal. We're talking driving dynamics and uh, would love to hear your opinion throughout the day. Drive. It's a long video. It's a long video. So, usually. Usually. So we're going to start with the nerdy regen stuff. First of mm -hmm. all, we have the gear selector in the center, which is a, an orb that flips over into a rotating gear knob. Pretty nice. I think it feels a little cheap if you ask me. Everything that's uh, looking like metal is actually plastic. Yeah. Of course. I know, but like, don't put a Genesis badge on it if you're just gonna put plastic everywhere. Well, it's just the way of the world these days. I know, it's just like everything I'm touching looks really nice, and then mm -hmm. as soon as I touch it, just feels like garbage. Yeah, fake. My mom has this car though, and she loves it. Good. Yep, so we can't knock it too bad. <laughs> it might hurt her feelings. Uh, but there's really actually not much to knock here. I think no. in terms of the luxurious bit, I don't think we'll have time to shoot a full review. We only had this for a couple days. I just don't like the leather quality. I think it feels very greasy. I don't know. Just yeah, don't. Yeah, it's, it's slick. Yeah, it's like yeah. you get in the e-tron, you're like, oh, that's what leather should be. Anyway, why are we even putting leather in cars? The non-performance ones have uh, animal-free interior. Good which is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Not that we're like vegans or anything, no. like most electric car drivers, <laughs> yeah, no, but, but like just, let's just use a better wearing product yeah. instead of animals. Oh, there's a little compartment in the center. That's nice. Okay, so we have the car in key up setting, which is uh, comfort mode. There's four, five drive modes, I think, four modes, eco, comfort, sport, and my mode. This also has boost and drift. This is the my mode. You can kind of make it into your own mode. Yeah, we'll, and we'll do that before we hit up the canyons to, yeah. to dial in exactly how we want the car to be. So we're starting in key up setting, which is level zero regen. In uh, uh, comfort mode, there's also an auto hold on or off. If I have auto hold off, it creeps all the way up to, let's see how creep speed is. Wow, pretty fast creep, four miles an hour. Yeah, that is. That's a really fast creep, and it's pretty strong. Gets up there pretty quick, actually. I don't know if you can see the power gauge here, but it's definitely getting up there. There's also auto hold, so when I come to a stop, auto hold goes green. I can come off the brakes, and it holds the car here perfectly fine. Then I just tip into the accelerator pedal, and we're off, which is really nice. Oh. Seat belts tighten. Feel a little that? bit. Not little... as much as the Audi does. The Audi Not goes, as much as... Yeah. <laughs> All right, I agree. And the thing with the Genesis is there's a setting for everything. Okay. Like, do you want the air to recirculate when you go into a tunnel? It will do that. How does it know you're going into a tunnel? Map data, I guess. Huh. It's pretty smart. I mean, it does some really neat things that I'm like, wow, I've never actually heard yeah, of that it before. it seems like it's got great technology yeah, in the car, for sure. The way that I equate this car is like, if you like Android and having control over everything, <laughs> this is the car for you. If right. you like Apple and just want one setting, you just get a Tesla. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah this is intricate. Yeah. and But the thing is, I like both. I guess I have an Android and an iPhone. So yeah, I mean, you can go in here and basically control everything. There's different um, active sound designs as well. There's 
Wow, one, two, three, and then you can customize your own sound design. What? I Look love at how this. The, the background <laughs> essence is wood, but there's no wood in this car. What's wood? This the background of it all. Oh, you mean yeah. on the buttons? On it's the buttons. it's not actually wood. It's copper. Yeah, that looks like wood. because Genesis is is how do you say it? What's the plural of Genesis? Geni genocide. Geni. <laughs> genocide. No, no not that one. <laughs> anyway, it's copper is their color theme. Uh, okay, okay, so basically, level zero regen, auto hold on. Let's turn auto hold off. Everyone understands that how that works. Car creeps forward. There's level zero regen, which is nothing off throttle. And then the brake pedal blends everything. And I actually really like the way that this feels personally. I think they did a great job on the brake pedal tuning. As I hit the brakes, it does a good job of first pulling electric motor and then blending in regen. The one thing I'm not totally sure of though is when you do a panic stop, uh, does it give us any sort of regen? And what I'm gonna do to just double check all this is go into the EV menu here. If I go to electricity use, it'll show me the actual um, power output and intake. I also have all the nerdy data using car scanner and an OBD2 wireless uh, adapter so I can see voltages, temperatures. Because everybody needs to see that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Very important. Yeah. But it's interesting because it's the first new driveline derivant, derivant? derivative <laughs> variant of EGMP that I've tested. So let's get up to speed and do a panic stop really quick and see if it uh, regens through ABS. Ready? Nope, so completely cut regen as soon as we got into ABS, at least in this case. We'll have to see if it does it in sport mode. I already smell it. <laughs> yeah, well, th this car's got 3,800 miles on it, but it probably hasn't been driven as hard as it's going to be today. Yeah, we're gonna, you're gonna test it for sure. Right, okay, so, so far, at least in comfort mode, no regen through ABS at lower speeds. Sometimes at high speed, it works better with different cars. Uh, then there's also level one, two, and three on the regen as I pull the left paddle. That paddle sounds horrible. Yeah, it's not a good actuation. Mm -mm. Um, and they're, again, plastic, but they're cold because the air vents are blowing on them, which makes them feel a little bit like metal because metal is nice. always colder. <laughs> good trick. Um, in level three regen, we get quite a bit of regen, but we're at, again, high state of charge. So even here, uh, we're getting 50 kilowatt regen at 97%, which is pretty good. And then as I speed up, we should maybe that's the max the battery can take right now. No, 77 kilowatt regen at 97% state of charge. Wow. Really impressive. When we get on the highway, we'll see what the peak uh, deceleration regen we can get. I bet it's well over 200 kilowatts. Hmm. Thank you very much to this lady for letting us go. On top of all of this, there's two more regen settings. Can you guess what they are? No. No, really? Two more regen settings? No. You've never driven these cars? No. It's the same as Ionic 5 and EV6. I, I don't think I've ever driven the Ionic 5. Really? Or the EV6. But we've driven, we've done like so many miles in them. You have, yeah. Yeah, but you've yeah. never driven them, huh? Okay, uh -uh. so I can go and hold the right paddle and then this will go auto. And so auto is pretty interesting. Your e-tron actually has this function right. where it pretty much prioritizes coasting, which is the most efficient form of driving because then you don't have power losses going regen and then back to acceleration. Mm -hmm. um, but then as you come up on a car, it'll slow down. And there's three settings of aggressiveness. You can choose rapid, slow down, normal, or smooth, whatever. I don't know what they're called, but three levels of auto adjustment. I have it in the strongest. I don't actually like it. I think I'd back it down a little bit. So it just follows the length of the car. Right. So it's pretty much like on adaptive cruise. Except it's not adaptive cruise, so you still need to pay attention. Well, it right. actually fools me. Like if I just have my brain off and I'm driving and it's yeah. in auto, I'm like, the car is slowing down and subconsciously I'm thinking, oh, it must just be on adaptive cruise. I don't know why I would think this. Mm. And then you start coming up on the car and it doesn't stop. <laughs> so then you're like, oh, brakes. So it fools you into thinking adaptive cruise is on. Right. But it's not actually, but it is a cool function. And I actually think it's fun to play around with the auto functions and the sensors. Yeah. Then uh, you can see, you can also adjust the severity here. So it, uh. with the paddles, it moves it to the left. And the more aggressive it is in practice, it actually shows this little green line coming to the left down here. So then I can hold one of the paddles to get out of this mode. There we go. And it's only just in max because we were stopped. So then on top of this, there's eye pedal. 
and iPedal is their one pedal driving function. The problem with iPedal is that every time you start the car, you have to pull the left paddle into iPedal. Mm -hmm. Every time you go from reverse to drive, you have to put it back in iPedal. It should just stay in iPedal, in my opinion. Um, yeah, but I, you get used to it. I mean, now that I've been driving my e-tron around, I get used to putting it in regen every single right. time. You have because to I it. just feel the difference is such a massive difference, and I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, I just gotta... But these paddle. left paddles are gonna get worn out <laughs> every day, just doing this the whole day. Oh, that's what warranty's for. Yep, warranty. Um, and iPedal is pretty interesting, and we'll talk about the feel here at low speed at the light, so I can tip into it, we start moving, I lift off, and it's a very gentle stop to zero. The way it works is because these are permanent magnet electric motors, they actually regen all the way to a really low speed before it blends to friction brakes. The other cool thing about iPedal mode is when you're at high state of charge like we are right now, it actually will give you all the regen that it can and then blend friction brakes to compensate for the same deceleration curve. So even if you full charge the car, which you really shouldn't do, I recommend charging these to 80 or 90% every day rather than full charging them. Um, then uh, you still get no perceptible difference as to the car slowing down, mm. which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, and so, and this guy's ripping the little Del Sol next to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so iPedal is actually a great way to drive the car. There is a downside with iPedal though, and that is that it keeps the front motor connected all the time. And remember how I mentioned there was that disconnect at the beginning of this video? It's Correct. dinging at us because we're coming up to a red light camera and we're over the speed limit. And it makes these cool, It's it sounds like a Japanese train station when it starts dinging at you. Oh, fancy. Yeah, same, yeah, here's another one. It's like all the Japanese train station noises. All the different noises. Um, iPedal keeps the motors connected all the time. So for example, if I go into eco mode, which should just be rear wheel drive all the time, my little power distribution graph will show, see the front axle still outputting power. And if I go wide open throttle here, it's less power. It's not everything it can do. But as soon as I pull it out of iPedal, see iPedal off, watch the graph here in a second, you'll see now it's just rear wheel drive, even at full throttle. So it's a little bit more efficient to drive outside of iPedal when you're trying to get max efficiency right. in the all-wheel drive cars. And and the, the full reason for this is because every time that front motor has to reconnect to lock it back in, it has to rev match, lock up, and then apply power or deceleration. And there's it's never perfect. Mm. You can't perfectly rev match that motor every time. And so that clutch is a wear component. I mean, it, it's probably the lifetime of the vehicle, but the the less number of disconnects and reconnects you can do limits the amount of time where uh, the motor will not be at the perfect speed and clutches are designed to be you know wear components essentially right just like a manual transmission clutch um, there's different reconnecting strategies as well sometimes if you're in an emergency situation you need it to reconnect as soon as possible so that you have full vehicle control and that means it'll have even more wear and maybe some NVH associated with it and then if you're just accelerating normally and it needs to reconnect this can be a slower process clutch reconnects disconnects maybe I need to make a whole video on this at some point I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> it's okay I think the nerds get it basically yeah. the whole motor disconnects itself from the car and spins at zero in the front okay so it doesn't have flux related losses and driveline related losses mm -hmm. okay so driving around in iPedal is how I think I prefer to drive the car every day in okay. comfort mode. The thing I like about it is there is no reconnecting or disconnecting. So as soon as I hit the throttle, we get instant acceleration and quite a lot of it. Mm -hmm. You know, 320 kilowatts is no joke in this mode. But let's say I had it out of iPedal. I'm gonna floor it and tell me if you feel a bit of a hesitation. Okay, ready? Flooring it. Yep. And then it thinks we're gonna crash into the Avalon. Don't worry. So you can feel it gave us everything the rear axle could do. Mm -hmm. Then it stumbled as it got the front motor hooked up and then there was a second wave. Yep, it definitely was. Yep, and this is a slower reconnect strategy than EV6 and Ionic 5 all wheel drive that I've noticed. And I don't know if it's because the larger front motor on this has more inertia, so it needs to make sure it's really hooked up better, but it's not as, a, not as fast as a reconnect as the other cars are. So that's why I prefer to drive iPedal around town because everything's hooked up and as soon as I hit the throttle, we just get to rip.
and collision, and collision warning. warning. <laughs> <laughs> I usually set them to early so I can see how their strategies are. I remember I was driving the Rivian with the test vehicle and um, yeah, the collision warning popped up because someone almost had an accident in front of us. And I remember going, oh wow, that's a really nice collision warning. Oh, I need to hit the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so there's all the nerd stuff on the regen and drive modes. Uh, basically, iPedal, I think, is best around town. I think if you're planning on keeping the car for a long time, I wouldn't worry about the clutch disconnect and reconnect. These are just the considerations from an engineering standpoint that I'm trying to show you that are at least discussed when these are brought around. So let's talk about how it actually drives once we get it set up. Really quiet. Really quiet, smooth. Very smooth. And it's comfortable. Let's turn off all of the um, EV fake noise things. It's kind of cool that you can create your own noise in here. So active sound design off. Yeah. Much better. Yeah, much, much better. And dead silent, unless you go hard, hard throttle. Is then it, are the windows double pane? Check it out, take a look. Yes. How about the rear ones? Take a look at that one. Yes, really. Front and rear double pane. Well, let me let me let me feel both of them at the same time. Well, you'll feel two pieces. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. They're probably not as thick as the e-trons are. No. <laughs> but that's okay. Still double pane with sound insulation in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I would say unbelievably comfortable, considering mm -hmm. we're on twenty-one inch wheels. And in comfort mode, it backs the suspension off and lets it work, and it's really soft. The seat massage is pretty good. Not um, you know luxury car levels, but I don't. I think the thing to come into this is like this car is like someone described luxury over the telephone and then produced this. It's not on the same level as Sears a Mercedes. A Sears catalog. Yeah, yeah, it feels a little <laughs> bit, you know, Walmart style. Yeah, that part, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just is like, okay, this all looks really nice, but when you start mm -hmm. touching stuff, it's like, oh, it's just plastic. But that's okay. You don't go around touching everything. The glove box drawer is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a drawer. Yeah, that's and let's show our viewers over here. Actually, I can't move the camera, but well, yep, it's a drawer. We'll put it in there. It's a drawer. <laughs> Man, big power though. Very smooth acceleration. It just yeah. holds it to pretty high speed. It's not a nauseating go like right. the Rivian or the Tesla is. And I find that the pedal mapping works really well for sort of mindless driving. When I roll into it, it goes. Where it kind of is annoying is if I smack the throttle down, you'll hear a bit of a delay. Ready? There's this throttle and then zzz. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is just in comfort mode and especially at low speed. You can like pretty much go wide open throttle and off and the car doesn't do anything. Like there's a delay response. Uh. And so I actually have been driving the car in uh, my mode where I've set it up for all the sporty drivetrain, but all the soft and comfort steering and suspension. And I think that's I a good compromise. Oh, nice I3, yep. Love I3s. One yep. of the best drivetrain tuning in the business. <laughs> um, okay, so for around town, the steering is very quick. Let's run through a couple neighborhoods and we'll just kind of show how this all feels. I have it in I pedal. You really don't need to use the brake pedal much. Although I feel like at lower speed, I wish they increased the amount of deceleration a little bit. So really quick uh, steering ratio. And, uh, but not as sharp as like a Model 3 or Model Y. Right. I think it's definitely a performance ratio, but um, yeah, probably on par with, uh, I'm trying to think what this would equate to. It's a little bit sportier than you would think, but I would say it's, it's fine for daily driving. Right. So, okay, let me show you the iPedal deceleration. 30 miles an hour, off throttle. We get a big hit of regen, and now it feels a little bit weak. Like we're still just coasting. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to be stopped back there. The Rivian does a good job of that. Rivian does a great job of this. And now we've come to a stop. Very smooth. You can't even feel it. No, I wouldn't know that we were stopped or anything. It's just still. one pedal driving done right. Mm -hmm. Just wish they would dial up the deceleration rate a little bit more than what it is. A little bit more aggressively. So there you have it. Around town, all the regen modes, low speed stuff is really good. Mm -hmm. Very smooth. I really like the way, you know, turning radius wise. Take a look at this more than acceptable, especially oh. considering it's on the big wheels. Not as good as ID4 or anything like that, but, well, no, but yeah, on par to be better than average, I would say. Correct. And um, 
no no real complaints. I like getting in and out of it. It's very easy. I mm -hmm. like sitting in the seat. It's very nice. The steering wheel's a bit too thick and padded for my liking, but that's again Genesis trying to be luxurious. Um, and now, can we do the fun stuff, which is like what I really care about? So see how it actually drives. Oh yeah, let's go for it. Okay, go take it up in the canyons. Yes. We are now headed on our way to the good roads. So let's talk vehicle setup really quick. So. Um, again, there's a lot of different adjustment points we can put into this my mode and there's a few concerns I have. So first, let's set up my drive mode for um, sort of how I want the car to drive in a sporty manner. So we're going to go um, custom, you know, my drive mode. Oh, there is a snow mode. Excuse me. There's also snow. So that's when you hold this button down. Now we're in snow mode. Uh, interesting. That locks four wheel drive, of course. and doesn't give you full full power okay so that this setting right here adjusts whether you want the holding the drive mode to go to your preference or to the snow mode okay so we're gonna say my mode then we can go here into the settings here so we can go motor into eco comfort or sport and since we're setting up the car for sporty driving I think we'll go motor in sport steering typically I like a very uh, comfort oriented steering. There's no reason to make a steering unnecessarily heavy or light. I think comfort's really nicely weighted. So we'll start with that and then we can play around later. Suspension, yeah, we'll firm it up a little bit. Typically, if you go like, you know, in some real sporty cars, I actually back the dampers off like in Taycan and some others. And the reason for this is, mm, yeah, don't, don't wanna be like hopping all over the road, but this car doesn't get like racetrack stiff, so we'll go there. Uh, electronic limited slip diff, we want it in the sporty setting, unless we find that it's almost too oversteery, and then we'll back it down into the comfort, we'll play around, and ESC, we'll turn it half off to the sport setting, just to, just to start, I think. And we're gonna pull over here as we get some more things before we actually hit the good part of the road. So I think we'll just duck in here to the right, where we typically do it. It must have been a while since I was here because this is all overgrown. Nice thing about an electric car is as long as the brakes aren't too hot, you can just park on the grass. Okay, because then you don't have a hot exhaust that could set it on fire. Let's see, any other stuff we need to change? We're gonna put the active sound design on and I have it advanced into the loudest. That's just, not because I like it at all, I would turn this off for me personally, but it's just to give the viewers a sense of the acceleration and the speed and, and how I'm driving the car. Um, okay, so I don't think there's a full launch mode, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna go and hold drive mode for my, which is all sporty. I'm gonna put regen, somewhere on level one the way the regen profile works is it basically moves the whole pedal map so the less regen you have selected off throttle the more modulation room you have on the accelerator pedal and i really like to have almost full modulation so i think i'll just keep it in level one or zero but we'll play around with it i'll let you know how i feel as we go um there's also the drift mode, which we'll get into later because we don't want to be drifting on little mountain roads with all and the bikers. With all the bikers. It's not, you know, today's not the absolute ripping day, but we'll get a sense of how this thing drives. And then there's the boost function. So I say we start with a launch because this is, you know, probably the most impressive bit about this car. Um, and so let's try it out and see our thoughts. So I have boost on and I'm just going to floor it. Ready? Ready. Oh. Big power. 60 miles an hour, 80, and it just Whoa. seems to rocket. So the zero to 70 is really quick. Yeah. And then it seems to, seems to fall on its face a little bit, but wow, the off the line acceleration is really strong in this car. Yeah, it is. I've also tried boost mode in a few different scenarios where it just roasts the front tires, but this is a really grippy surface and it's warm outside. I don't know the temperature out. I think it shows on the dash in the left side. Yep, 75. So pretty good traction. Best launch I've had in this car, actually. Right, and yeah. And didn't, didn't spin the front tires. So yeah, that seems pretty good. Let's start hustling it through some corners now. Wow, great acceleration. Very soft on the suspension. Feel it roly-poly around. Yeah. Even in the sport setting. Yeah, kind of wish there was, you know, sort of a one-up. Want to go slow around the bicyclist. We're not here to disturb anyone's day. Go big power out of this corner. Wow, it certainly has the right amount of power. It's smooth. Yeah, very smooth acceleration. Just flat. 
Yeah, above 70, it seems to slow down a little bit. Although I did drag race against the Model 3 Performance. I was at about 45% state of charge. They were at about 55% state of charge. Uh -huh. And this and that were dead even. And this had a little bit lower state of charge. Interesting. Yep, so higher voltage also helps with a little bit of pack sag. Right. Um, but it's not the end all be all. I, I don't really harp on the high voltage of this car for good reason. Look at the mail carrier ripping it. Right hand drive Jeep. <laughs> Going for it too. Um, okay, so seating position can't get low enough. That's the case with every car. Every car for you. Yeah, but like really can't get low enough. And I don't like the steering wheel. There's too much fatness going on here. The steering wheel's really padded. For those of you who know, my preference is a thin wheel um, that's really quite stiff. That one's a little chunky. This Everything's one's chunky. a little chunky about it. I mean, the buttons are chunky. The buttons look like that. that what is that firefly phone that you buy your 80 year old grandpa yes, so you can the, see the, the blind buttons. mode you can also put the <laughs> screen in blind person mode well you know honestly that's a good thing because i feel like this car actually does appeal to an older generation yeah, yeah. so i agree man the mail carrier's getting it actually oh, he does this every day <laughs> or she we don't know which man taking the racing line on the way in you see that <laughs> that's awesome so um Okay, let's actually start evaluating the car. Let's do it. Okay, acceleration in non-boost mode, fine. Mm -hmm. I would say compared to other performance EVs, it's sort of there. Right. I mean, <laughs> once you drive some of these really fast cars, like it's not that. The EV6 GT should be pretty spicy. I'm looking forward to that. So the mail carrier is, now you put your turn signal on after you stop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love the right-hand drive Jeeps. Okay, and now big power. Here we go. Boost mode just for a little bit more. There we go, coming in. Yeah, so under-tired for sure. So the whole thing is soft, leaned over, and just has not much grip, unfortunately. So under brake, get it into the corner. Will it be drifty on the way out? A little bit. Uh -oh. It definitely gave a lot of front motor and then seemed to have juiced the rear or the LSD kicked in is probably what happened and it helped rotate the car around. So that's a very positive, very positive feeling. I wonder what happens when you go boost mode out of a corner. Yes. <laughs> so it's just soft and like definitely seems to be a little bit floaty to me. Um, and like, I think ESP is just getting way in the way of everything we need to do here. So I'm just gonna go full off, traction and stability control disabled. And wow, okay, so way less hardcore than I thought it was gonna be. Right. The brake pedal feels great, because I'm coming in you know, with low regen, and then it's modulating this difference between deceleration on electric motor and on friction brakes. And if I go here to energy information, electricity use, we can keep an eye on all the stats. Yeah, so very, very nicely balanced powertrain, of course, as you would expect, same gear ratio, same power. I almost wish they had a little bit more in the rear. The way to compensate in the rear is with this LSD and braking strategy to help get the power to the outside wheel, and it does that. It's just a little delayed. Just a little. I wish it would actually start locking up the diff on corner entry because what it's, what's actually happening is it's pretty much fully open on corner entry. As I apply throttle, it goes, oh, we need some LSD action, and then gives me the LSD action. So I can show that here into the corner, big power, and then you can see it just goes straight before it kind of tucks in a little bit. Right. And yeah, we really are not actually going that fast. I'm sure the noises make it sound like we are. Right, yeah. It just does not have a lot of tire. No. <laughs> it's not just like you can just... <laughs> tire squeal everywhere and we're still behind you know Subaru yeah and they're not even phased <laughs> no I mean we're not uh, this this just needs a lot more tire so my prediction there was correct a lot of front axle work happening I still think they should have gone bigger motor in the rear even after that because I don't know mm -hmm. if you heard but we were spinning front axle out of those corners yeah for sure yeah so not, not, not great not but that's easily great. fixed no? yeah but you can this certainly is a world better than the standard Ionic 5 and EV6 right. in terms of powertrain control. Mm -hmm. There's really not much to complain about. You just have to go in understanding this is sort of the performancy luxury, luxury one, <laughs> yeah. not the performancy hardcore one. <laughs> yeah. So I think EV6 GT is going to be awesome when they turn up the dial a little bit. We'll just go super slow around the bicyclists here. Maybe we should have done this not at a prime time. 
We always do it in prime time. We always do it in prime time. Let's go boost mode, see if the motor's overheat up the hill. So four, three, two, one, and we're out of boost right there. Coming through a flowing section. The car really likes very smooth inputs because it's a little bit bouncy. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, dampers, are you in there at all? <laughs> yeah, I think it's very comfortable. I, yes. I would like it. Yeah. yeah, and and certainly for the target buyer of this car, mm -hmm. good. But sure. not not like I would take the name performance out of it if I was advertising it. I mean, it's a performance for people who would be buying this. Car. It's performance in a straight line. Right. <laughs> the balance is great in into corner. So like here we go, we can come into this corner for example, just lean it over high speed. Oh, seatbelts tighten up when you do that. So it does the pull star thing, and then we can come out of this corner full throttle. You can see it just pushes wide. Man, this guy's flying with the dog in the back. Not good. <laughs> not good. I would not encourage him to go any faster with the dog just open in the rear of it. Mm -hmm. This is typically where we do our braking test. So ready? We'll do a 60 mile an hour braking test. Yeah, nice brake pedal feel. I can feel ABS through it, but the problem is can't even spin the front tires. This pavement's good. When you're on slick pavement, it just goes, yeah. lays rubber, and it's like way too much power on the front axle. The seatbelt won't unlock. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> just had a couple of things fly up. One of the problems with an open floor plan, of course, is, um, yeah, things just fly around. So like what you put back there will fly up. Oh. But that's okay. We're gonna stay on power most It'll of the time. Amazing. We'll let the guy go up ahead. Um, yeah, and it's just tire limited. So mm -hmm. I think you just get some PS4S's on this thing. You definitely need aftermarket suspension if you're gonna be actually hammering it. Yeah. But for the Genesis brand, let's just put this car in context really quick. It's soft, but fast. And soft doesn't mean slow. For example, Miatas are soft, but really fun to drive. This has great drivetrain control, but we're in boost, using it a ton, coming in, hard braking, seat belts go, stuffing it into a corner. Here's the big bump mid corner. Can't barely even feel it in this. And of course, we're not trying to encourage the guy with the dog to go faster. Yep, drift mode activated. So you need to be in, in the factory sport setting, not my mode. Makes sense. Really long throttle pedal. Regen's gone to auto. I don't know why. Okay. Can you do drift and boost? Yes. Okay, good. Well, there's a car coming, but let's just see how it feels coming out of this tight corner it should just feel like it really wants to rotate I hope no one's around big power I'm floored it's not doing anything Ooh. why isn't it moving I was wide open throttle that whole time it wouldn't really? go yeah what let's try it again here into a corner pretty good speed full power I'm still floored Thank you. what you've got to be kidding me Coming in pretty hot, big power. Yes, it's it's basically, I see exactly what's happening. It's drift mode if you have a big surface and you're on a slick surface, mm. not for pavement. Here's what's happening, you floor it, it's just rear axle and then it blends in the front. Mm. So it feels like it's doing the reconnect thing, but it's actually not, it's, it's fully connected. Right. So it's like, here's everything the rear axle can do, let you get sideways and then move. The problem is we need more than what the rear axle can do. So that's kind of a lame excuse of drift mode. Mm -hmm. Probably works pretty good on dirt. So we need to take this on a dirt road. Right. Okay, so drift mode, not impressive on the street at all. I noticed that the other day when I played around a little bit, I thought like, oh, maybe I did something wrong. But nope, just gives you rear axle and then front. Not really into it so much. Coming into a corner, it doesn't even do brakes or anything like that, so. Okay, mm -hmm. take it out of this mode go into sport. It's over up there, it's for sale too. Yeah, that's good. So we got some shopping to do. Mm -hmm. And they're building a house down here, wow. Whoa. A lot has changed in the last couple months since I've been up here. This person's getting the most aerodynamics. They're doing 33 oh, miles an hour. I've seen bikers do like 80 down here. Yeah, you really can't. Yeah. Can get out of the middle of the road though? <laughs> what the Jeez. heck is going on? That All right. A beautiful spot of land though. I've noticed that there's been no blending of regen as we started getting harder on the car. So as I was driving it harder when I was in regen zero, and maybe now we can show this, 
you'll notice driving, 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 regen zero, hit the brakes even lightly, no regen at all. So that's the reason enough to go level three. The car's accepting regen when I back down the paddle, uh, but the brake pedal is not blending regen into friction for some reason. It might be because it's too hard for the system to do proper blending when you're on the car this hard or in sport mode or my mode, but it was definitely doing it before. So I think it's temperature related uh, as to why it's having this type of behavior. Also, uh, we were driving with the brakes in comfort mode uh, and now we're in sport. So let me just see if I feel a, an immediate difference right now. Yes, almost too sharp. I'll try them and leave them in sport, but I actually like a brake pedal that has, that's firm, which this is, but I have room to modulate, which is comfort. So I might actually choose to leave the brakes in the comfort setting, but I'll try their, their sport setting for now. The other thing that's really heating up the brakes more than, than me using them is the, um, the electronic differential controls. It's trying to get us out of a corner and it's using a lot of brakes for this. Yeah, I don't want the parking brake on, so we'll turn that off. Now we're sitting everything unlocked. Um, and so every time it's coming out of a corner, it's using the brakes to try and move the car to where I want it to go and the LSD. There's one thing that would solve all the problems with this car. Do you know what it is, Alyssa? You told me, but I forgot. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> it really needs a uh, torque vectoring rear differential. Right, I was totally going to guess that. Yeah. yeah, because we've driven a few different EVs. No, we've driven the, the Magna prototype EV with this and the Golf R has it, and Audi RS3, and it would just get the car exactly where I want it to be. And so that, to me, is um, is what this car is really missing. For this price point, almost $70,000, it should have a, instead of an electronic limited slip diff, it should have an active uh, torque vectoring differential that can overdrive the outside wheel. If it had that, I would be sold on this thing. So that's one driveline improvement I would suggest. Um, the braking system is actually pretty good considering it's a brake by wire. Uh, since we're on this dirt lot, I'm pretty sure drift mode is going to work really well here. So I actually need to go into sport mode. I have to hold ESP. So there's three levels on, half off, and fully off. Pull both paddles. And why won't it go into drift mode? Drift. Don't know why it had a little bit of a hiccup there. <laughs> and we don't really want to wreck the paint, but we just want to see exactly what drift mode will do. So yes, it's just rear axle at that point. Right. And then it's just like, okay, like that's kind of fun that you can just like, big skins. See if it, we can hold the drift out onto the pavement. Nope. No power. I'm floored. Still floored. Still floored. There we go. Don't like drift mode in this car. No. It doesn't really do what it says it does. Good for loose surface. So if you live on a ranch and want to slide your GV60 around, good for that. Okay, yeah. now let's get the car set up for like hardcore driving mode because we're on a great empty road now. My drive mode, ESP full off, brake pedal in, sporty brake pedal. Let's pull up the EV menus, actually. So we'll go here, energy information, electricity use. It's had to do some battery cooling. It's doing it right now. And here we go, hammer time. On the brakes, soft, but great steering on the power. Car's coming, we'll slow down. It's good for like a 7 tenths cruise, but it doesn't love to be thrashed. What was just an empty road is now not so empty. Here we go. Coming in, hard brakes, seatbelts on, stuffing it in. Definitely a little bit of oversteer, just straight understeer. <laughs> Needs the torque vectoring rear diff. Anytime you're on the power, it just goes wide. And if it had a torque vectoring diff, it could use that outside wheel to stuff the nose in. These complaints about the car being too oversteery, I'm not sure where that's coming from because I haven't noticed it really at all honestly and unless maybe around town if you juice it it gives the rear axle a little bit more but sometimes these cars are adapted for market specific conditions and this one's just pretty soft for our market here we go best stretch of road coming in pretty fast a little bit of dab of brakes i mean yeah soft helps with all this 
So like, yeah, naturally it's balanced. You can feel the rear axle helping through some of this stuff, but wow, it really needs like the next firmest suspension option. <laughs> we are just all over the place bouncing. <laughs> what the heck? So much body movement. <laughs> And it's just spinning front axle out of corners. So it doesn't love this, but it loves like a, this type of driving, like a five tenths, I think what most people would consider to be yeah. a fast drive. Cruise. Boost mode. Still giving us all the power. I can feel a little bit more torque steer through the wheel in boost mode. Brakes still feel great. I think drivetrain wise, see it was out of boost, I have to hit it again, why? boogies no signs of thermal limiting battery's definitely cooling itself <laughs> you can see battery cares ripping up the power as we drive it but balanced just gotta be gentle with it and there you go performance driving yeah i mean for what most people are going to be buying this car for it's great it's great i mean <laughs> so like when you break down the subcomponents of motor and battery pack and braking system uh, all really, really, really good. What lets this car down is the suspension. Right. And tire. And, well, yeah, tire you can fix that. I mean, tires and suspension, this thing would be a serious machine. Serious machine. So that gives me a lot of hope for EV6 GT. Ah, when is that coming? Soon, now-ish. Now-ish. Mm -hmm. Very soon. Nice. That car is going to be mega. Let's go take this on the highway and see how it cruises. Let's do it. You join me now out on the highway and have to say road noise, really quiet. Wind noise, quite a bit of it from up top all around, I'd say. Here a lot. It is windy right now. We do have a bit of a headwind as we head into Denver. But I thought let's do like a little bit of a max regen test. So cruising along, there's literally no one behind us. We're in the HOV lane. We're going to be looking at this drive line number. I've actually compared it with some of the hard data right here if you take a look. Right here, you'll see we have all the nerdy data pulled up. This is an app called Car Scanner, and it's hooked up just to a general OBD reader. So what I'm gonna do is accelerate. You'll see power being output, and I'm gonna do a full regen. How much are we gonna get? 295 kilowatt regen right there. Wow, that's a lot of regen. Okay, so um, this thing, more than almost any car I've heard of. So Tycon will do 265 kilowatt. EQS is right up there, 270, 280. Hummer EV, I think is in the 300s. I bet we could get this into the 300s if we had a bit more speed. So I say we just leave a little bit of room in front of us and we'll do it again. Let's try it out. So big power and big regen, 278 seems to be where it wants to max out and we're at 29 percent state of charge so it can really stuff the energy in there huge amount of regen uh, just in terms of everything else we're sitting on adaptive cruise control now it's doing really good lane centering and pretty good distance control there's four settings i actually find that i like to keep it on the farthest setting but thankfully there is a whole bunch of settings let's see setup vehicle uh, driver assistance, driving convenience, smart cruise control. You gotta play around with these menus here. You can adjust your distance here and then also the way the system reacts. So if you want it to react super quick to close a gap or to accelerate quickly, you can set all of that here. And so we're actually on our way to shoot our standardized driver assistance test right now, our hogback driver assistance challenge. And this is a big part of that. The one downside to the driver assistance in this car though, is it doesn't get HDA2 for the US market. For other markets, it does. Also, the US market cars get this little bump on the dash right here. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to show you. When this is orange, it means that the high voltage system is charging the 12 volt battery. Why you would need to know that, I have no idea. Uh, but that's something only the US and I think Canadian cars, so North American market cars get, I think, but at least just the US ones. Um, yeah, just like super good cruiser. I did a range test in this, that video is already live where I put on this ergo motion seat, for example, and you can choose different types of massages or stretches. It's uh, more like air bladders in the seat just to keep you moving. You can also have the seat kind of squeeze you if you go into a corner or floor it or hit boost mode, it'll come in. The seat's really good. They cheaped out, it's not on both sides like we mentioned at the beginning of this video. Uh, the passenger seat, what do you think, Alyssa? Uh, I think it's very comfortable, uh, just a little bit slidey feeling, a little too soft, 
but I do really like the headrest. Yeah, and the headrest moves towards you in a way as well. You can see Denver off in the distance, just coming into town now. And uh, overall, I would say, definitely can cover some distance in this car. 235 miles of range in eco mode at 70 miles an hour. And I think that's more than enough, especially considering you're gonna be charging this thing so fast, up to 70, 80%, just like, bam. So uh, that's the thing with these cars. I consistently see them at chargers getting charged 80, 85, 90%. And like you see the owners running back to the cars because they charge so fast. Um, I do wish they had some sort of a, maybe a battery saving function, which Tycon and EQS has, which doesn't let it charge so fast, but um, definitely that guy almost pulled out in front of us, almost had to do a brake test. Uh, and a Polestar 2 right here, performance pack, blacked out. Oh, that's a manufacturer car. So. Who's driving that? Book a test drive. Oh, cool. Uh, nice. This has more power. Let's see. Uh, that has 150 kilowatt motors each. We have 160 each. And that's without the boost mode. Uh, yeah, so cruising down the highway, relatively quiet, except for the wind noise, and that partially has to do with the shape of the car. I think this band that they have running around the outside, this accent band, makes a lot of wind noise. I'm not totally sure. But... Um, yeah, quiet double pane glass. The suspension smooths out when it sees bumps in the roads. I don't know how much that actually makes a difference. The car's really soft as is, even considering it's on these big wheels. But the performance, I believe, is the only car to get the active damper with this visualizing suspension situation. Anytime you use adaptive cruise control, it shuts eye pedal off and runs in rear wheel drive regardless of drive mode. Even in sport mode on adaptive cruise, you can see it's just rear wheel drive with the front end disconnected. So that's pretty interesting. Also has these little side uh, camera things that come up, but again, no HDA too. So no lane changes and no cross traffic in the front. Oh, we have to get over here. Zip. You can still zip through traffic pretty well on this thing if you need to. And um, I think that's a big miss. Why would EV6 and Ionic 5 have HDA2 with lane changes and, all, and scooching and other cool tech, whereas this doesn't? I don't know, but it wouldn't stop me from buying one. I think the lane changes work pretty well. You hit the signal, move over, and it locks back in. If you're curious on that, again, watch, watch that video, which will come out at a later time. So uh, definitely a great highway cruiser. The seats are the way to go. The car is the way to go. And I think that kind of wraps up our opinion on the car, which is a very easy car to daily drive and live with. Um, you know, definitely seems to be better optimized than EV6 and Ionic 5. It's, it's cousins, if you will, whereas this car rides better with this suspension. It has battery preconditioning, no plug and charge, big miss there. Um, but, but, you know, having this extra power is great and man, does it lay some big front wheel drive burnouts. So it's definitely a straight line car. Doesn't love to be hustled up a back road, but it's balanced and gets the job done. Uh, it's doable, I would say, but I, I don't think it lives up to the performance name in, in the title, unless your idea of performance is just straight line acceleration, which for many people it is. Um, it's really perfect for someone like my mom and she owns this car, which is she daily commutes to work. She's got a heavy foot. She rips around. She wants a nice, comfortable interior with the cool seats. She's got that. The car looks premium, but it may not be the prettiest in my opinion, but you can't deny it looks premium. And, um, yeah, so I think for her demographic, for her, for herself, this car is really perfect for me. I'll probably be more of a EV6 GT or Ionic 5N if we start looking across car line. Uh, variants, but yeah, really, really like this thing. Can't go wrong if you end up buying one, which is tough because it's only available in four states. It's only available in the New York metro region, so New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or California at the moment. They'll expand it, but like that's like not a good sign, I think. So you gotta live local to get one, and you have, I think you have to live in one of those states to get it. So no one's going to watch this video because no one can buy one. I think they only sold 200 and something <laughs> last month. But here you go. Here's the content for you guys. Right. 200 of you. Well, they've already bought the car. Right. So it's really for no one. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video. Really impressed overall with eGMP. This by far is the most impressive of all of the variants, just in terms of the extra capability and all of the settings and crazy things in this system. It's the one I would buy if I was just going for a cruiser. I'd give up the looks and I think I'd go for this 
over Ionic 5 all-wheel drive. Interesting. Yeah, I like all the extra modes and stuff they give you. Of course. Yeah, I don't like boost mode though. I wish you could just leave it in boost and it would run out when it can. Right. Or when it has to. Oh well. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.